Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a look at using particle flow and the newer M particles, uh, formerly the Orbaz Technology Toolbox 1, 2, and 3, to crunch the front end of a car here. As you can see on my screen, I've got a, the, the front end of a car that I modeled some time ago, uh, and we're going we're gonna to crunch it. This can be work, work with any shape, as long as it's got enough polygons to uh, deform uh, along the edges. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started here. We've got our front end of the car that I'm going to use. You guys can use a, a box with plenty of shapes or, or anything to follow along with this, unless you have your own car. Uh, but the, the idea will remain the same no matter what. Uh, and I need something for my car to collide with. So we're going to go ahead and make a, let's say, a telephone pole, uh, simple as we can. We'll just do a cylinder here that's uh, big enough to impede the movement of our car. I'll jump to the Modify tab real quick here, and for my cylinder I'll give it an radius, a radius of about 18. Uh, we'll round the height you know, down a little bit, don't need that tall, and I don't need any height segments or anything like that, and I think 18 will do us just fine to get a nice round collision. Uh, I'll pull my telephone pole a little ways back with my move, move tool here, and uh, we'll go ahead and try to animate. What we're going to do is animate the pole hitting the car because it's a hell of a lot easier to animate the shape that isn't filled with particles than trying to worry about animating the shape that is filled with particles uh, when the end result is going to be exactly the same uh, especially if you end up caching out your your data and your models and all the animation anyway with something like X mesh or super mesh or something like that uh, so what I'm going to do is turn on my auto key with my move tool my pole selected maybe about 15 frames gives us about half a second uh, I'm going to go ahead and move that as though it were right smack center uh, of my car. Then I'll go ahead and turn off auto key. I can make sure it's center. I think my car is, yeah. Uh, and this is what we've got. Boom. 15, half a second. This thing comes out of nowhere and crunches us. Okay, let's put that back to zero. Uh, now that we've got that done, we're ready to start our particle. This is actually a fairly simple one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit six to open up particle view. Uh, my depot down here is gone so we'll go ahead and unhide that so we can see everything that we're going to do uh, you know if you need more real estate turning your depot off and everything and using the right click menu new uh, and choosing your events and operators from there is a nice way of doing that but uh, just so we can see everything we'll turn everything back on uh, and we need a an empty uh, flow to start with now with M particles I usually like to drag out an M particle flow here uh, it's a it's kind of like using a standard flow but uh, it gets everything working uh, generates your, your uh, physics world and everything right off the bat over here we can see that it has generated us a grid of boxes uh, that uh, we're gonna go ahead and modify here uh, first things first we don't need this spin so I'm gonna come down select it right click and delete uh, we are gonna use the birth grid so we'll just start right from there uh, the birth grid that's this thing that all these boxes are uh, spawning on. Uh, what's nice is we can use a reference object or a geometry uh, object in order to do this rather than just a big large square. Uh, so I am going to do that, but let's reduce the size of our grid here first. Uh, Ten's a little bit much, so let's go down to four, which gives us a whole lot of these little boxes all overlapping each other, which means that if we jump down to the shape, we also need to reduce that. Uh, if I've got a grid size of four, I want to do something smaller than that so that uh, our cubes don't end up uh, uh, exploding uh, or, or overlapping in any way. So I'm just going to half it, and we'll go with uh, a grid size of four and box sizes of two. And that gives them plenty of space in there uh, that we can use, since this is going to be more like uh, using particles to rig this, uh, this mesh anyhow. So that'll work fine for us. Then we can jump back up to our birth grid. And I want to go with a, let's go with a grid base of triangular because it kind of offsets everything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, kind of like layered bricks uh, a little bit better rather than uh, using the box form. Uh, and then I want to turn on this restrict by mesh volume. I also want to turn on the delete internal particles. Uh, we can go ahead and give it uh, one layer is good, but if you've got a couple of layers worth of particles for this thing to use, uh, or boxes in this case, uh, it's, it'll work a little bit nicer usually. Uh, you can add or subtract whatever you need or don't need uh, in the future. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead, now that this button is active, for my reference geometry, click the None and then click on my car. It's going to look like all your particles have disappeared because our birth grid is actually this box right up here. 
And regardless of what shape we're using, everything's got to be inside or contained in this grid. Uh, so what we're going to do is kind of bump up the size, maybe 130 over 130, to something larger than our car. If I can minimize this, jump out of this, and look at my top viewport, uh, we can scale this. 130 looks good. We can also kind of move this down a little bit, uh, maybe to 90. And then we'll go ahead and move this birth grid down. Heck, I'll just zero out my z-axis. And then increase the height to something a little bit bigger than our car, maybe 65. 65 or 70, that should work. As long as long As long as the whole box is surrounding our car. Okay, uh, and then we can go ahead and hit the Calculate Mesh Volume Limits button, and you'll see that our car, in the particles, these boxes, are now doing their best to fill out the shape of that front end of our car here. All right, that's good enough for this thing. Uh, if you need more particles ever, you can increase your particle limit, change your sizes for whatever object you're trying to crunch along with me. Uh, but for us, that'll work. Uh, that'll work fairly nicely. We don't need everything tightly compact. We just need enough to fill out this car. And each one of these is going to act as a kind of a bone or a control point as we smash them in using a collision shape. Uh, from there, uh, we've got our physics shape, our MP, or our particle shape. Uh, box is fine since we are using cubes, uh, so we don't need to make any changes there. Uh, let's go into the MP world, our physics world here, and if we hit the little arrow up next to our world driver, uh, it'll open up on our modify tab over here, our physics world properties, our, our uh, mass effects properties. Uh, right now, our cubes will fall, you'll notice, right out up from underneath our car, so I want to turn off gravity. Uh, and, you know, turning off the ground collision plane will save you a little bit of calculation time as well because it's unnecessary. So I want my particles basically to stay in place where they're put. Uh, down a little further, this is a number, the subframe factor down the advanced parameters uh, that you're going to want to pay attention to any time you work with uh, M particles here. Uh, the subframe factor for this guy uh, is default at 2, and the higher this goes, the more exact your animation is going to be. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, you can raise or lower this to get a better, uh, better effect based on whatever artistic vision you've got in mind. Uh, I like to start with a higher number, a little bit of a higher number at least, so that we can get a little bit more exact uh, physics replication with this. Uh, other than that, that's all we need to worry about. Everything else, uh, you know, we might want to turn on multi-threading uh, so that we can take advantage of that uh, using our, our M particles. If you've got a computer that's got uh, more than one core processor or something like that, uh, I happen to have a six-core hyper-threaded, so I've got 12 uh, threads I can I can utilize in there. Uh, other than that, we're ready to go back into our particle view over here. Uh, the next thing we want to add to this uh, is going to be a glue operator. Let's go to our MP glue here. And I'll put that underneath our physics world, uh, and we'll go over here and take a look at the settings. This is the setting that's going to kind of create a webbing throughout all these little boxes we've got inside of our car, uh, and that'll hold them all in place, uh, as well as kind of stick them together so that when we get this thing crunched, all these control points that we've now got controlling our hood uh, can stay locked and bonded to each other. Uh, for our glue operation, we're not going to want to do simplified. Let's do distance because it's going to matter how far these uh, boxes are away from each other. As well as once we crunch them in, you know, we'll get a kind of a, a holding effect if we use the, the distance here. I think a, a bind distance of 5 should work fine for us. Uh, we can come down here and click on the visualize bindings. You might need to come back over here and kind of turn your display off and then turn your display back on again uh, in order to get them to show up. But there's our glue bindings, if I zoom in here a little bit. And we can see that they're kind of all holding hands now. All these little boxes have a binding within them. Uh, the maximum binds per particle, we can kind of increase that if we want to get a few more. And I do, I kind of want to see a lot of this uh, webbing action going on in here. So from top to bottom, side to side, left to right, uh, and we can do maybe upwards of eight to fill that in completely. 
Uh, you may also want to increase your, your bind gap if you check that, and we can put that up to about 5 as well. Uh, you can increase the gap that they will spread uh, if you need to. Uh, if, it's, uh, if your particles are a little farther away than that, you might increase the binding distance. Uh, maybe something like uh, 8 will work to uh, make that a little bit better. Maybe we can get away with 6 uh, particles per binding instead of, of 8. Uh, so there's a couple of settings in here that you can go back and forth and adjust until you see this nice tight uh, binding web of all the particles back to front kind of holding hands. That's exactly what we want. Uh, and I do believe uh, we do want current event particles, everything like that. We don't want the force to be broken because this is going to be controlling a mesh, so uh, I don't want these particles to go flying off anywhere. So everything else should probably be left at default. Next thing we're going to need is a collision object. So let's come down here and we want to find our MP collision since we are working with M particles. And I'll drop that up underneath our MP glue. Now you can come over here and it works a lot like a regular deflector or collision modifier, only we have to use something different than regular deflectors. If I hit the buy list button, nothing is going to show up for me to select. It's, it doesn't find anything because I haven't done something fairly important here. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and we'll do it right now. And that's my collision object over here is clearly my telephone pole out here. In order to get it to work with M particles, I have to add a modifier to any object I want to collide with my particles. Sorry about that, my mouse's uh, wheel is uh, riding on air there, and it's kind of zooming in and out on us. So I want to select my telephone pole here, come over to my Modify tab, and I'm going to add the PFLOW Collision Shape World Space modifier to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark the smooth surface so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it all jagged on me. I'll turn my edge faces off, it'll facet it. Uh, and then turn on the activate button. Once that button has been activated, uh, you can come back to your MP collision operator, hit the buy list button again, and now we'll have something in that list to go ahead and select uh, and add to our deflectors. Uh, let's see where we're at here now. Uh, let me zoom back in on our car. And if I scrub forward in time, we'll notice that it really is smashing all of our particles and they are going a little bit more nuts than I think we probably want them to. Uh, so in that case we can add one more operator. Let me back over to zero here on our timeline again. Uh, one more operator to help slow that down a little bit so that they don't turn into super jello or jelly. Uh, and that would be a M particle drag. Uh, and I'll kind of bring that in up underneath uh, above my physics world here. The M particle drag, we can tell it to use this dampening, uh, and uh, our damping can be both linear and angular here. We can turn those numbers on, uh, and then we can give it a, a value here. Uh, if I say 100, uh, we'll probably slow those particles down an awful lot. So if I scrub forward, then we see that the particles just move out of the way. If I hide this guy, and I Alt-X on my car hood. We'll go underneath here. There you go. You see that they've just moved back a little bit, and they, they don't go quite so far and make that jelly shape kind of super deformation. Uh, by all means, adjust these a little bit. Uh, if you don't like the exact shape, we can kind of maybe move down to 50, and we'll get a little bit farther, a little bit more uh, deformation. Uh, if we go all the way down to, let's say, 5 in each, we get even more. So it really depends on how much uh, overall complete damage you want here. That's to me a little bit too much. So let's try 25 and that's that's given us a super smash there. In fact I think we're gonna like it a little bit uh, higher than that even. 40, maybe 70, until we're, we're satisfied with that. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good crunch from our telephone pole, I do believe. So I'm going to push this back here. I'm going to select my, my car uh, hood here and Alt-X to turn that visibility back on. That's it. That's the particle system. So we don't need to add anything more to this. This looks like it will function for us uh, 
for this purpose very well. The only thing left to do is uh, basically skin our car to follow these particles, which are now our control points for this thing. Uh, we use the original hood here as a way to spawn particles. I don't want to use the same hood uh, as the particle skinner because then we can run into some, some loops that are going to cause us trouble. So what I'm going to do is select my original shape, which I've got named hood here, uh, and I'm going to go hood underscore, uh, let's say, particle spawner or particle emitter. In fact, let's just simplify it. Let's call it hood underscore emitter. Then, with that same hood selected, I'm going to right-click to open up the quad menu, and I'm going to select clone from, uh, from the list of options there. Make sure copy is uh, marked because we don't want it to be an instance and then just go ahead and change the name to hood instead of emitter we'll say hood skin on that one uh, that being done now we'll have both in our hood uh, both of our hoods sitting right on top of each other uh, you can click once click twice to switch between them or come up here to the select by name at the top of your screen and we want to select that hood emitter and I'm just gonna right click and hide selection on that guy so it's out of our way entirely. It's already spawned our particles so its purpose is complete. Then our hood skin is what we're going to do the rest of this with. First thing we want to add is going to be a particle skinner modifier to it. Down here in the list there it is, particle skinner. And uh, we're going to add our particle flow system via this uh, this dialog right here. We'll hit buy list and I want to select that PF source underneath that PF engine uh, to my particle skinner uh, to do the work. I might come down here and uh, we can kind of maybe increase the controllers just a couple just so that uh, they're controlled by just as many particles as our bindings uh, tend to reach. Uh, I don't want to do any of this other stuff because that has to do with uh, how you can break or rip or tear. Uh, you know maybe in the future you do want your car to get like kind of a, a ragged tear down the middle of it uh, you can play with some of those others but I'm just looking for a crunch for this uh, so everything else is probably default will work okay for us all I want to do is come back up to the top turn on that activate skinning and now this hood is being controlled by the particles that we've created which means if I scrub forward in my time all that action is going to still be there even though the pole's hidden and my original hood is also hidden uh, and you'll see that it kind of deforms not kind of exactly deforms along the direction that those particles go uh, other than that you know you can put yourself a uh, turbo smooth modifier on top of there if you want to smooth them out but I wouldn't even bother with that because crunched and wrinkled looking it's probably pretty sweet pretty good there you go texture that Bring in the rest of your car that, that isn't going to be controlled by particles and do yourself some lighting and texturing and rendering and you're set to go. That's all there is to it.